I'm going to start today's interview off with some poetry. Although I've won Ford Frick's award, I feel that our listeners will get bored. I hope writing in verse doesn't take bad to worse, but last time I read one, they roared. Now, the author of that is with me today. This is Eric Nadell. Eric, you might know from Texas Rangers uh, Broadcasting, and he's also a poet. And he's come out with a book called Lim Eric, that's L-I-M-E-R-I-C, because you name Eric, etc. Whimsical Rhymes from the Voice of the Texas Rangers and His Friends. I started with that limerick because it kind of summarizes a lot of what you're all about. You're a tremendous baseball broadcaster. The Ford Frick Award is given by the Hall of Fame. Eric won it in 2014. Uh, you're also concerned about what your listeners, uh, wanting them to be entertained by what you're doing on the air. And, you know... You had to find a reason for this, so let's start off with this. Um, why did you guys do this? Why is there a book about limericks with your name on it? Well, we started doing limericks on the air originally because the Rangers gave us a commercial to read uh, for a promotion they were doing called Pay the Day at the very beginning of May, and there was a little rhyme in it at the end that said you can pay the day because we're playing in May. And I read it, and then I said to Matt Hicks, my broadcast partner on the air, you know, if they're going to give us rhymes, why don't they write us a limerick? And he said, well, they won't, but why don't you? And I took the copy home, I rewrote it in limerick form, and I read it the next day. And just a few minutes after that, Rangers were playing the Red Sox, Matt started talking about a guy who had just been called up from the minors. Their AAA team is at Pawtucket. So Matt says, he just got called up from Pawtucket. And I said, that sounds like the first line of a limerick, too. And Matt said, yeah, I've heard that one. I don't think we can use it on the air. I said, well, let's write a clean one. So over the next inning or two, Matt and I together wrote, a young hitting star at Pawtucket each time up would step into the bucket. If he got this corrected, he'd soon be selected for Cooperstown, like Kirby Puckett. And we post, we everybody laughed. We posted it on Instagram and on Twitter, and people seemed to like it. And we're always looking for ways to have fun on the broadcast. A few years ago, we did the Word of the Week, where we each picked an obscure word and used it every game for a week. And we figured this would be really fun. And if a game was bad, it might give people a reason to stick around till the eighth inning to hear what that day's limerick would be. Now, unfortunately, the Rangers did not have their best season in recent memory this past year. So that probably situation, the latter one you're referring to, came up a little more often than we would have liked it to. So here's a limerick that I felt like summed up some of that. And it happened to come up um, on, uh, on, on a particular holiday. On National Tequila Day, the A's would not go away. We were leading by eight, but then lost the game late. Do I need a shot? <laughs> well, I may. So that, in a, in a nutshell, kind of summarized uh, the reason you might have to do this a little more often than you were hoping. You know, and the original idea was we would write limericks uh, primarily about that day's game. And we wrote a lot of them about that day's game, but as the season went on more and more, we were writing about other things, about other sports, uh, about other things going on in baseball. And eventually, once I realized we were probably going to put these in a book, I started writing about things that had nothing to do with baseball. Well, and one of the things Eric wrote about was limericks. I mean, you know, you, obviously you could have done this with any form of poetry. We could be talking about haiku, iambic pentameter. That, that's you know, a little over my head. head. Uh, why, but why, why limericks specifically? Well, I, I like, I think they're funny. And uh, I remember learning in the eighth grade about Edward Lear. There once was a lady from Niger who smiled as she wrote on the tiger. Um, and I was really good at it. When I was broadcasting minor league hockey back in the late 70s, uh, we used to kill time on road trips by writing limericks, and I was actually really good at it. Now, those were limericks about guys on the team, which you certainly would never have read uh, on the air anywhere. But, you know, I, I, had this, I had this talent for limericks. I was never any good at haiku or any other form of poetry, you know, that we learned about in school. But for whatever goofy reason, I had a knack for limericks. The problem with writing this many is it becomes addictive. I would wake up in the middle of the night. One of the limericks in there, it's one of my favorites. It's called Freeway Anxiety. It's about Los Angeles. I had a dream uh, because I had this really bad rental car in L.A. And the on-ramps there on the freeways are really short. And I, I almost got killed one day trying to get on the freeway in this car that didn't have enough power. And I had a dream about it that night. I woke up in the middle of the night 
just with this line in my head, it's awful when your rental car sucks. And I said, that's got to be the start of a limerick. I wound up writing a limerick about it, but then I didn't sleep the rest of the night. I was so revved up from writing that limerick, you know, I wound up with three hours sleep that night. Or people would just say something to me in conversation, and I would immediately turn it into a limerick. It, it got probably pretty annoying, especially to my wife and the people who are around me a lot. Here are some of the genius rhymes Eric came up with. Um, I, I, because let's face it, not every word has an obvious rhyme that comes with it. So here were some of my favorites. Gallardo with a bard though. The ref a uh, and falefa. Here was a triple. Banana plus Santana plus Plana, spelled P-L-A-N-N-A-H. A weekly planner. <laughs> yes, Your weekly yes. planner. Planner. And then uh, malicious and canicious, I thought, was oh, especially Norm good one. about Norm Hitchkiss. Yeah. Um, now, baseball is has sort of a poetry tradition, and we think of it as Casey at the bat. That's a, the po. If you had to say there's a poem that's baseball, epitomizes baseball, that's the one we, we would always think about, Ernest Thayer. And so there was one limerick in here that I thought is very much in that tradition especially, and it was this one. It's about Nelson Cruz. My feelings toward Cruz are complex. His homers soar several decks. He's kind and he's shy, but if he'd caught that fly, we wouldn't still have this damn hex. Give us the background of this. Well, everybody who's a Ranger fan, you know, remembers why the Rangers didn't win game six of the World Series in 2011. Uh, but they wouldn't have even been in the World Series if Nelson Cruz hadn't single-handedly destroyed the Tigers in the American League Championship Series. Uh, he's a wonderful guy, extremely charitable, and we've all you know, loved him for years. Since he left the Rangers, he's made a habit out of beating Ranger pitching regularly, and for the last few years he's been playing for Seattle, meaning we see him 19 times a year. And I always see him before the game around the cage in batting practice. He's incredibly warm and friendly. I know his dad, who's a talk show host in the Dominican Republic. Uh, he's just an incredibly wonderful guy. And at the same time, you can't get out of your head the fact that if he'd caught a fly ball, the Rangers would have won the World Series. So I'm constantly conflicted about, obviously I'm not rooting for him when he's playing against the Rangers, but you know, when Seattle's playing somebody else, and you know, I read a box score and I see that Nelson hit a home run, uh, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy for him. And I'm sure a lot of Ranger fans feel the same way. Sure, and Eric and I would both have a different ring if, if that had gone slightly differently. Oh, I think about how our lives would be different, not just the ring. Yeah. I might be retired, living on an island somewhere in Bora Bora, I don't, I don't know. Uh, not having authored a book of limericks, probably. <laughs> Probably not. So I, I'm sure he'd uh, still be into baseball, and that's that's one of the things that is great about this book is is baseball. And I, and I picked out a, a couple of other limericks that I felt like really epitomized the, sort of the depth of baseball that I thought had had a little extra vo uh, uh, verve in that department. So here here's one that I liked. I ask you, what did Morris lack for Cooperstown all those years back? Was it really a sin that all he did was win? If you don't know you don't know Jack. And so what I loved about that is there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff wrapped up in there, a bunch of subtext, uh, and then it's also something that now gets people potentially talking about it. I mean, they may have been listening to this in the eighth inning of a game, and all of a sudden the guy turns to his buddy and says, well, I never thought he should have been in the Hall of Fame. And his buddy says, yes, he should, and now you've, you've sparked um, interest. Yeah, the, you know, the whole thing with Jack was, you know, his ERA wasn't good and all of his other uh, numbers weren't good. But he won. If you wanted to win a big game, he's the guy you wanted to pitch. He didn't make the Hall of Fame till his final year of eligibility because those other stats weren't good enough. And then as it turned out, to be able to use that phrase, you don't know Jack, was I had to create a limerick about that. And that's basically what I did. You know, sometimes the first line occurs to you, and it doesn't wind up as the first line when you actually construct the limerick. And in this case, you know, this was, the, this was the killer line. This was the money line of the limerick, and it wound up as the last line of the limerick. This is all you aspiring limerick writers. These are really good tips that you're picking up here. Um, all right, here's another one that, that also stuck out for me, and, and this was some personal experience as well, because I remember this catch very well. Uh, we were happy to see GMJ. He made that remarkable play. 
It was crushed by Mike Lamb. Gary leaped, said, no ma'am, caught it, and we shouted, say hey. Tell us what this is referring to. Okay, well, say hey refers to Willie Mays, who was referred to as the say hey kid, because whenever he greeted somebody, he would say, say hey. And the catch reminded me of Willie Mays, who was the greatest center fielder that I ever saw. And, you know, to be able to put Gary and Willie in the same, the same stanza of a limerick seemed, seemed to be the right thing to do, considering, you know, how incredible that catch was. Yeah, it was back, I think, 2006, and he just robbed Mike Lamb. He basically climbed up the wall, and more than half of his body was up above the top of the wall. And the illustration that goes with it is great. He was drawn... He was drawn to be Spider-Man by Arthur James, which is brilliant. Well, yeah, let's talk about the illustrations. A, an illustrator named Arthur James put pictures to a lot of the, the limericks that, that Eric wrote, uh, and, and it struck me that these were all very baseball savvy, if you will. There's one of Juan Marichal with his uh, signature big leg kick. How did you work with him to develop these? Well, first of all, when I got introduced to him, uh, it turned out he was a big Rangers fan and an avid sports radio listener. So that right away uh, encouraged me that he might be the right guy for the job. He was actually the first illustrator I talked to when I started thinking about doing a book. And he said, just give me a few limericks and I'll draw them. And I gave him a few, one of which was the Nelson Cruz one. And it was obvious that he captured the essence of the limericks. He got it. And in a lot of cases, I made suggestions uh, or other people around me made suggestions as to what might work on a limerick like this. But most of the time, the ideas were his, and he figured out, you know, what should be there. Uh, and then we would get a first draft, just a rough drawing, and I would say, yeah, this looks great, or I would say, yeah, and in this case, I, I actually had to say, I want to see Gary higher up on the wall. You know, he needs to be higher. More of his body needs to be above that. But he had the whole idea of the Spider-Man thing. There's another, baseball wasn't the only thing in this book, as Eric mentioned with limericks. And one of the ones that struck me as just flat out cruel was when Jared Sandler and Matt Hicks, a couple of your partners on the Rangers broadcast, challenged you to write a, a, this enormous limerick with every World Cup team. My, I mean, you did it. I'm not going to read it because it it, it, it's, it's a you know, reasonable forever, expenditure yeah. of time. But uh, how did this come about and, and what did you have to do to realize this? Well, it's funny because I don't really know anything about soccer. Uh, but the World Cup was about to start and I figured, well, I'll write one. And I asked those guys who were the teams, you know, who are the best teams. And of the best teams, I picked out the, the names that would rhyme best. And I wrote a, I think it was a two stanza limerick. Uh, mentioning the, you know, the top seeded teams. And I read it on the air, and then I think it was Jared who said, well, you know, what about the 16 or the 28 or however many other teams I missed? And I went back to the room that night, and I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And I wound up writing, it took 14 stanzas to include all the teams that were in the World Cup, all 32 teams. And some of those rhymes are really stretches. You know, what do you rhyme with Croatia? You know, and we went with euthanasia, as it turned out. What do you rhyme with Korea? We wound up going with diarrhea. And it was, that was probably more fun than any other limerick. It's probably the one of which I'm, I'm most proud that we actually somehow pulled it off, getting all 32 teams in there. Very nice. And then you continued as the tournament progressed. You wrote Yeah, then I got into it. Plus, we, we wound up having a, a World Cup pool, so I actually had to start paying attention. And then as Croatia kept advancing and advancing, I got fascinated by Croatia. I didn't know anything about it. I started reading about Croatia, and then they made it to the final against France. And so we have, you know, we have a few limericks about that and also about Croatia. I have one that's not even about soccer. It's just about Croatia. Awesome. Yeah, what do you rhyme with Dubrovnik? Well, anyway, we'll get to that. It's perhaps perhaps that'll be a 2019 lyric, uh, limerick. All right, so you mentioned earlier limericks uh, as a form, you, the, you know, the Pawtucket and Nantucket and things like that. Limericks can, you know, go kind of a different non-radio friendly direction. Is there anything that you guys wrote perhaps late at night that couldn't ever make the book? There's at least 30 limericks that I have in a separate file that were written uh, with the full knowledge they were never going to be on the air, they were never going to be in a book, that they were completely just for fun. And uh, 
Someday, maybe they'll make it into print under a pseudonym or something like that. But uh, they, were, they were just as much fun to write. I feel sure they were. <laughs> All right, so this book, obviously, it's the holiday season. If you have a friend or a family member who loves baseball, who loves the English language, and let's face it, if you don't love one of those two, you're probably not much of an American, uh, this would be a great present. As you can see, I'm reading it on my tablet. You can get it for Kindle. You can get it there. Where else can you get this? Well, it'll, it's on sale at the uh, Grand Slam shop in the uh, Rangers ballpark. Uh, we're gonna, the book's only been out for a few days. We're going to start talking to bookstores uh, to see if they'd like to carry it. But right now it's Amazon and the Ranger Gift Shop and the various signings that I'm going to do in the area. I'm doing two at the ballpark. I'm doing one in the gift shop on Friday the 14th. I'm doing one at the Ranger's Toy Drive on the 17th which will probably also be in the bookshop. Uh, I'll be doing one at Legal Draft Brewery in Arlington on Saturday the 15th from 1 to 4. And one, I love this one, at the Warstick Bat Company in Deep Ellum from 10.30 to noon on Saturday the 15th. And Matt Kemp is going to be present. There is actually, totally coincidentally, a limerick in the book about Matt Kemp from when he had that collision with Robinson Chirinos. And that limerick is written by Evan Grant. You know, we have about 40 limericks in the book that were sent in by listeners and, and other people. And Evan's the one who wrote the one about that collision between Matt Kemp and Evan Grant. I do have a limerick in there, though, about Warstick. I'm just so intrigued by this company. It's a bat company that's owned by Jack White, the musician, and Ian Kinsler. And these bats are gorgeous. They're works of art. So I want to hang them on my walls. And I was, you know, I was moved to write a limerick about the company and then Arthur drew this incredible drawing of Ian Kinsler swinging a guitar and Jack White playing a bat. And I said, well, this, this has to be in the book. So there's a two-page spread with a limerick about Warstick, and those guys have gone crazy over it. They love it. I'm sure. And one other thing we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, a portion of the proceeds go to the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation. And that was one of the motivations to actually do the work to do the book. I'd been looking for a project to do for them. You know, I'm an advocate of uh, many nonprofits around here, focus on teens of Cafe Momentum, a number of animal rescue organizations. But I was looking for something to do for the Ranger Foundation. They do such incredible work. Uh, providing recreational opportunities you know, in disadvantaged neighborhoods. That youth academy in West Dallas is just beyond belief. And uh, this was a good opportunity you know, to create a book and a portion of the sale of every book goes to the foundation. Tremendous. Yeah, they do do great work. All right, Eric, thank you for joining us. This has been really fun. Me too. And uh, we enjoyed it. So this is Eric Nadell. I'm Rush Olson for the Fort Worth Weekly. Check out his book and uh, we'll see you next time.